Second cast. Hello, this is Jeff at Battlefish again, and uh, I hope you're not getting tired of these redfish videos. Um, kind of a weird day. I didn't get out until about well, almost 11 o'clock, I think. Went into Goodby's Creek, and I was looking for tarpon. That's what I was looking for, so I headed up to one of my favorite tarpon spots. Still haven't seen any there, uh, but anyway, um, Came around the corner, it was outgoing tide, and uh, I put down the live scope, and boom, right in front of me were a huge school of redfish. And this was my second cast. I uh, missed the school. It's amazing how you can miss the school by, I don't know, a couple feet, wrong angle, whatever, and uh, not get a bite, and then. Um, and then hit right on them. I was throwing the uh, Tsunami Pro Mullet, the silver one. There's two colors, I think, a, kind of a greenish olive color and then a silver one. I throw the silver one. Uh, that's good for redfish and tarpon. Uh, and then later on, you'll see I start throwing a uh, submission fishing uh, slow pitch jig. I belong to uh, Salt Strong. We meet the last Thursday of every month at uh, Mavi's on Beach Boulevard in the Intercoastal Waterway. Uh, you're welcome to come. You don't have to be a member to, come, to uh, attend the meeting, but uh, we do encourage you to join, obviously. So uh, um, I spoke at the last meeting about live scope. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, we have a contest for most spots uh, and a contest for catching a redfish on the submission fishing yeah. jig so uh, we'll see how we do yeah so I submitted this one I counted about 48 individual spots on the port side of the fish so hopefully it's a winner and that measuring stick goes to 32 yeah. inches so it probably was about a 36 37 inch fish somewhere. so I had drifted uh, down the shoreline a bit and I would I just motored back to my original spot. It was a pretty fast outgoing tide so uh, I drifted pretty quickly looking for more fish. Uh, I'm in about eight feet of water I think and uh, I believe uh, the fish were anywhere from four to twelve feet of water. Uh, nowhere near any docks. Submission fish if uh, you watch my videos, and I hope you do, and uh, hopefully you subscribe too, uh, we've got over 260 videos of fishing the St. John's, mostly fishing the St. John's River. Um, you'll note that I do not catch my redfish near docks. I catch them <laughs> well away from docks most of the time. Um, I think I'm up to about six or seven fish I've caught out of the hundreds of redfish I've caught, maybe six or seven I've caught near a dock. So, um, just my thing, I guess. A couple of things you're gonna hear in the background is, uh, number one, I've got little, little tiny USB fans on my GoPros to keep them from overheating in the hot sun. They overheat otherwise and then shut off. Uh, you might hear that buzzing noise, sounds like a bee buzzing. Sometimes that's uh, those little fans. And then uh, the other pound noise brain. you might hear in the background is a three. Craftsman misting fan that I have Tsunami. now that uh, sucks water out of a five gallon right. bucket. It's uh, With very a, cool for the hot days. Certate Daiwa 5000 reel. And he is taking me to town. I get most of my Holy gear cow. from Resellers Reef. And the rod is a Tsunami Carbon Shield 2. Uh, medium fast rod with a Certate Daiwa 5000 reel, 50 pound Power Pro slick braid, 40 pound mono brown Berkeley big game leader tied with an FG knot, uh, and a loop knot uh, to the jig. 
Yeah, I had a couple that pulled the hook. Uh, I probably, you'll see one of them that I did catch was just barely lip hooked. So I probably pulled uh, the hook out of their lip. Oh, um, They are shit. such hard fighting fish. And there's just a dramatic difference between a slot redfish and an overslot redfish in fighting. It's just dramatic. Damn it. I can almost tell the difference between a 35 inch redfish and a 38 inch redfish as well. Um, with the equipment I'm using. So besides spotting fish, one of the things that is uh, tricky uh, on the live scope is the direction you're pointing your live scope at and the direction the bo boat is pointing. I have a separate pole for my live scope so I can spin it around almost 360 degrees, otherwise the boat's kind of in the way, but uh, I can see uh, anywhere with that live scope and I don't have to worry about positioning the trolling motor and I keep it going in one direction. Then once I spot fish, let's say 90 degrees off my starboard side, um, I like to point the live scope at them, but then I like to turn the boat towards them as well. Or if I have somebody on the boat with me, I want to position the boat so they get a shot at it as well. Uh, so what makes it tricky is the direction of the boat is going and the direction you're pointing the live scope and then the direction you're going to cast uh, to the school. So it, it still is a little challenging, but it does take uh, a little practice. And uh, I can tell you, I did not make more than 25 casts in less than three hours of fishing. Uh, and I, I boated eight fish, lost two. So that gives you a pretty good uh, catch ratio to casting. Uh, which is exactly what I wanted Live Scope to do for me was to cut down on the manic casting that I do just constantly, you know, searching for fish. Uh, my main hat camera battery uh, disconnected and the camera shut off, so I lost sound on the, that main camera. Um, that's why there's a silent pause here. Yeah, I've been following quite a few YouTube videos and uh, discussion boards on live scope, and one of the challenges also is uh, I do not, not I've looked, I'm disciplining myself not to cast them unless I see fish, because there's no point. There's it's empty water, um, and uh, some fishermen have uh, been frustrated with live scope um, because they don't see fish, so they just keep casting and casting and casting and. It's kind of crazy. If you don't see fish, there's just no point in casting. So um, that's that is a, and now, that's a real problem. Now, the rod I'm using here is a Phoenix seven foot seven rod. I picked up at Resellers Reef in their uh, used rod oh, department, man. <laughs> brand so new. Uh, it's about a two hundred dollar plus rod, and I got it for one hundred and thirty. Um, looked brand new. There wasn't a mark on it. And uh, so uh, that's one of the great advantages of Resellers Reef is uh, take a look at their used stuff. They got oh, used cool. reels, used around. rods, and uh, boy, you can really save a moment. bundle of money by uh, picking up uh, some of the used stuff. This is a big So you can see the Craftsman uh, misting fan right there. It sits on top of a five gallon bucket. And I put a small cover on there and just cut a hole in the middle and put the uh, suction tube down inside. And uh, right now I think I just have the fan running without the misting because there was a little breeze already. Hey, uh, beware at the boat ramps, by the way. The uh, algae is really bad and um, I actually slipped and got soaked uh, at the Goodby's ramp. Uh, that's why I don't have my boots on and I'm in socks. Um, beware, it is really, really slick at these ramps. When the wind dies, you can see, and I can see them on live scope, just huge clouds of glass minnows. Uh, they are just, uh, the river is just crawling with glass minnows. Um, I don't know if this is what the redfish are eating. 
I mean, the clouds of glass minnows I see, and maybe there's some shrimp in there, I don't know, but uh, uh, I really don't see a coordination, though, between the glass minnows I see on the surface and the schools. I have casted at several schools of glass minnows, and, and I also look with the live scope, there's no fish in there. Five inches, I think. Back to your school there, buddy. This is the uh, submission fishing uh, slow pitch jig I was using. It's a 20 gram size. Uh, I think he, he's got a name for him as well, but you can go to the website and take a look. Um, it, uh, what I liked about it is it, it kind of, when it drops, it flutters. Obviously, that's what jigs too, and uh, it flutters down. So all you have to do is cast into the school, let it drop, and it drops pretty fast. So some of these fish were holding in 12, 15, 12 to 14 feet of water or so. So you wanted to drop uh, pretty quickly, and uh, it dropped pretty good. And uh, all you had to do was tighten up the line and no uh, hang on. Drag it so tight, and he is still. Taking it like nothing. Okay. Ah, man, he's a big red. Uh, that swirl in the background was not my fish. That was another group of fish, apparently. Oh, man. Pull the hook. Pull the hook. I'm also experimenting with the trolling motor, trying to steer the boat away from the fish in sort of a circle, uh, a large circle. Uh, that seems to uh, keep the fish on one side of the boat, and I can uh, land them on that side of the boat. I just love the color of these river fish. They are so orange. Uh, their fins are orange, uh, partly because of the tannic water, but uh, partly because there's, there's shrimp in the river right now, and they're probably eating uh, quite a bit of shrimp.
Okay, it's the mission fish and jig. Hooked up with a river monster. Okay, wait, 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 wait. You can't just take off like that. Oh, God, he got off. What the hell? No, he didn't get off. He's still on. He's running towards me. Oh my god, this one's even bigger. So I've had a couple comments about reviving these fish. I have uh, timed uh, the amount of time that they're out of the water, and it's less than a minute and a half, even with taking pictures. Uh, so that's one factor. Using 50 pound braid also and 40 pound leader, I'm able to get these fish to the boat fairly quickly. Uh, I'm not fighting them for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, that's what kills these fish, uh, even if you try to revive them. So, uh, heavier gear, I, I just still do not, no one can explain to me why anybody uses 15 or 10 or 15 or 20 pound test line. It just does not make Dude, sense man, to me when you're fishing the river with 150 pound tarpon around uh, that you could hook into. Um, again, I can cast 50 pound braid as far as you can cast your 10 pound braid. So. Um, ah. It's uh, it's not a casting thing oh, at all. Oh God! So I'm not sure why oh. people use such light freight. Okay, another submission fishing jig. Redfish. <laughs> So if you're considering live scope, uh, a couple things to consider. Um, I've got a nine inch chart plotter, uh, echo map. Um, it's the UHD two, so it's a higher resolution. It works fine. Um, the packages that I, I think uh, Bass Pro and some other companies sell uh, usually include a 10 or 12 inch chart plotter. Um, the GPS map brand uh, by Garmin, uh, the model GPS ma map, uh, you can record uh, what you're looking at. Um, I can do screenshots, but I can't record um, what's happening on the, um, on the live scope uh, screen. So uh, consider that. Um, the Echo Maps are less expensive. Um, the, uh, I really recommend a separate hole like I've got uh, there's plenty there's lots of them out there I went with this one because uh, I could 
I didn't have to screw any holes into the deck of my boat. I attached it to my uh, casting platform and uh, it worked out uh, fine from my little drawing design I made and it works great. Um, and parts are replaceable at cheap. I can just go to Home Depot or wherever and buy the PVC if something breaks. The, uh, so uh, the other thing is when you do get live scope, try to uh, work around some docks to get a point of reference. And I've got pretty much the default settings and uh, auto gain is set up. So uh, I don't really mess with the settings very much. Uh, but uh, the big thing is uh, your point of reference. Uh, so if you're, uh, you know, if you're looking up and you see a dock, can you see it on the live scope? Where is it on your live scope based on which way you're pointing it? Um, uh, having a point of reference like that uh, really helps you get familiar with uh, how it's working, where it's pointing, uh, where you're pointing it, where your, where your orientation of your boat, the live scope, to the fish, to the dock, all that plays into it. So uh, uh, I find that working around docks point, as a point of reference uh, really helps uh, get my orientation right. Mission fishing jig. Just toss it in and let's sink. No action required. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then just hang out. Oh god. Okay, and the rod and reel line is off from Reseller's Reef. Shield, carbon shield. Tsunami carbon shield. And a Daiwa Cert 8 reel with 50 pounds, super slick or slick power pro. And then uh, 40 pound. Mono brown, big game, perfectly mono leader, tied with an FG knot. This could be the big one of the day. 38, the biggest one so far. 36, and the rest of 32s. This one is definitely in that 38 class, I think. I mean, 50 pound test, I can hog, hog all of it, but I don't want to pull the hook. It happened already a couple of times. The hook got pulled. Come on, baby. Oh, I tail it. Once you find a school, you just drop this jig in the school and let it flutter to the bottom and ready to pick it up. Oh man, right on the pin. And 
I got my trolling motor set going in a circle because this keeps them on this side of the boat, number one. And I think, see. So this was the last fish for me that day. And um, it was the biggest one. It measured 39 inches. Um, and again, boy, it's quite a difference between you know, 30 four inch fish and a 39 inch fish and how they fight. Uh, you can see this one picked it up pretty close to the boat and just took off, uh, kind of right in front of me. Again, if you're fishing with uh, other people um, and somebody hooks up, you don't have live scope, you don't know there's a school around or anything, and you hook up like that, make sure the other people cast near where your fish is fighting. Uh, don't worry about getting lines tangled up, that's the fun of it. Uh, the, uh, because those fish are chasing this other fish. The first fish I caught in this video, uh, they actually tore the uh, mullet out of its mouth and, and ripped it. Uh, so uh, they're chasing other. They're chasing that fish with the bait in its mouth, especially a jig like that. So uh, they'll be around that other fish as that fish is fighting. So get your other partner uh, to throw near where you're fighting that fish. Well, this could be. I think it's the biggest one of the day. Ah. Ah. John's River. I I, uh, I I just can't explain it. Um, I showed up here late, 10:30 or so, and right away I put the light scope down, and there was a school right in front of me, and I got a good picture of that one. It, it was a couple acres of redfish at least, um, and uh, after that it was just small schools kept showing up, and uh, I just have to. Uh, I, I, re I reset my live scope to 150 feet and I can't cast that far obviously. I can cast about 70, 80, 90 feet depending on the wind. So uh, um, the schools would show up and I was, I was not getting casting far enough. I, I was, they were too far away. It literally had to be halfway between the 150 mark and my boat for me to cast to them. And I didn't figure that out until later. And I was able to uh, uh, figure that out and, and, and hook up. Um, but the direction, trying to point the boat and the live scope at the fish so you can cast in that direction is tricky. Uh, it just takes a little getting used to. Um, but uh, boy, if you miss these fish by a couple feet, you don't hook up and you'll, uh, I won't show it in the video, but I mean, there were several times I cast it and did not hook up. Uh, I lost at least two fish, maybe three, that just got unhooked somehow, pulled the hook probably. Um, but uh, I was using the submission fishing jig and uh, 20 gram because it sank quickly. And all you have to do is throw that jig in any bait. You just throw it in the school and just let it sink and tighten up your line and uh, they'll set the hook themselves. Um, so smallest with a couple 32s, uh, 36, 38, 35, and a 39 at the end. So. Uh, Crazy, crazy freaking day. They're probably still out here, but I'm, I'm done. I, uh, uh oh, I'm sitting in uh, shallow water. It's really low tide today, so uh, gotta get out of here. Wind blew me into the shallow here. And uh, I picked up my trolling motor to talk to you guys. So uh, anyway, that's it for the day. It's the July 1st and the schools are still in the river. Um, I don't know how you could chase them without live scope. Uh, side scan, you might be able to pick them up. 
uh, but that's just a picture of where they were <laughs> and these fish are moving man I, I, I uh, at one point I was trolling about a mile an hour and I was having trouble keeping up with them so uh, they are booking and um, you know sometimes they'll slow down and kind of stay in one area but uh, usually they're they're moving pretty quick so man these are big fish too I mean 32 to 39 inches that's crazy um, anyway I love it thanks for watching and keep on watching appreciate it